Diocese of Auckland, uh, Father Chris Denham, um, a born New Zealander, uh, but he spent much of his childhood overseas in countries such as Peru, the Philippines, the Solomon Islands, and Mexico. He's an old boy of St. Patrick, uh, Patrick's College in Wellington. He studied science and business before finally beginning his studies for the priesthood. And he currently serves as the parish priest of St. John the Baptist Parish in Pinell, and also as the chaplain for the Auckland Catholic Tertiary Chaplaincy. Let us all welcome Father Chris Denham. Thank you very much. As I am the last of the testimonies that you're going to be hearing, you will have heard a number already, no doubt, all with their different stories. Mine is going to be, first and foremost, a conversion story, which may slightly surprise those who know my background. Uh, a slight correction on what you heard there. Very definitely New Zealand bred, but not New Zealand born. I was born in Rome, baptized in the Basilica of San Sebastiano above the catacombs. So you can't get much more crazy Catholic than that. So why am I speaking about conversion? Well, am I speaking of some great transforming moment in my life? A moment where, as some of our fellow Christians would want to say, I accepted Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior? No. My conversion story is a bit more complicated than that. But as I said, a cradle Catholic, Colegio San Agustin in Manila, there may even be fellow alumni of that school here, and St. Patrick's College in Wellington educated me. A fairly conventional Catholic education. And that gave me hmm, a particular vision, I like to think. So perhaps no great surprise that after a couple of years at university, I started discerning the possibility that maybe I was called to be a priest. And also, at that time, I was thinking, perhaps a Marist, a member of the Society of Mary, like Father Neil Vaney. After all, they had taught me. I'd learned much from them. There was much there to attract me. So I made contact, and I spent a year living at the Marist Seminary Extension, number five Mount Street in those days, just below Victoria University, where I was studying. And the one thing I learned from that year seemed to be, no, I'm not called to be a Marist or a priest. Or at least, not then. Because that's the first point I'd like to make about our, all of our vocation stories. When we start exploring possibilities, whether it be priesthood, religious life, married life, Sometimes, when we pose that question, we need to recognize that the answer from the Lord is not necessarily yes or no, but can be not yet. That was not, however, the way I saw it. I was pretty sure it was a no. And so I headed off and lived in a number of different places and did a number of different things. I would firmly in all of that time have said, I'm a Catholic, but perhaps I'd have had to be a little bit like, I don't know, a show of hands, how many people here have seen a film, we're going back a number of years now, starring Mel Gibson called Air America? Dear me. Oh, Shows how old I am, doesn't it? Not perhaps one of his greater films, and he's not, in a sense, the star of it. But he is a lead character, 
And in this, he's working for that CIA front organization in Southeast Asia during the Vietnam War, Air America, doing a number of things. And he describes himself living there in Southeast Asia to the star of the film as a Buddhist. And as the film goes on, the, his colleague points out to him that really he's engaged in an awful lot of things including being a part of a large-scale drug-running operation that don't really seem to be compatible with his description of himself. Mel Gibson's character just looks and said, I never said I was a good Buddhist. <laughs> well, that might be more the description of me in my, in my 20s. However, I don't want to give the impression that, yes, I was involved in running a, in a large-scale drug-running operation or indeed engaging in, in a list of any really terrible sins. Nothing, sadly, that dramatic or basis for a powerful conversion. It would be a much more powerful conversion story if that's what did happen. No, I was just slack, lacking anything that could be called fervor. I never stopped entirely going to mass, but you wouldn't have made much money wagering on me being there on any given Sunday. Once a month was probably about enough, I thought. The confessional saw me not. But I went on, yes, calling myself a Catholic, and then something happened. Not a blinding light, not a sudden vision on the road to Avondale or wherever. No, just a feeling that there was something a little missing in my life. A feeling that there was something more than what I was doing every day. And so I made a fatal mistake. I started going back to church more regularly. Because, all of a sudden, a few ideas started cropping up in my head about being perhaps more the sort of person that I really ought to be. Now, a part of that was, in fact, discerning what I should do with my life. And so, of course, this is when I seriously, once again, started thinking about the priesthood. Wrong. That's when I actually started taking rather seriously a very nice young lady who I thought might actually potentially one day be my wife. And it was only after a little while with her that I discerned two things. One that no, to her great everlasting benefit, I'm sure I was not intended to be her husband. And that perhaps no, I wasn't intended to be any entirely human person's husband. And that's the second point that I'd like to make for any of those of you discerning your vocation. It's quite easy to get in a situation where you're trying to balance two possibilities, shall we say, priesthood and marriage and trying to work out which one am I supposed to, to try, which one am I supposed to go to? Very often, the answer to that question is to be found by starting to pursue one of them. Had I not been seriously considering the vocation of marriage to the point of having, I thought, potentially identified the young woman who would be my partner in life that actually revealed to me that no, there was something else for me. Just as you'll meet more than a few married men who discovered their vocation to marriage while at the seminary. Starting to date another young person or starting seriously the process for entering religious life or the priesthood isn't getting married, it isn't getting ordained, it is a process of discernment. Sometimes we have to follow one path in order to find the path that we're actually meant 
to take. So you could call that an aspect of my conversion. But eventually, with the help of several good Marist priests, I found myself joining the Dominicans. And may I specifically commend them to your prayers today. They've just elected a new master of the Order of Friars Preachers, Gerard uh, Timiron, a Filipino, I believe, as the, fir the first Filipino, the second, first Asian, second non-European to be successor to St. Dominic. I got a marvelous formation with the Dominicans. And yet, here I am, not as a Dominican priest, but as a priest of the Diocese of Auckland. Yet again, following one path, showing that I'm actually meant to be on another. Now, it could be that I'm just one of those people you have to hit with a big brick to work out what I'm supposed to be doing. Or perhaps it's the reality for a lot of us that what I am supposed to do isn't a theoretical ideal, something that I can write down on a piece of paper, a plan for my life, but something I actually have to live and learn and discover as I go on what it is that I am called to be. And so eventually, I found myself back here in Auckland, ordained first as deacon, then as priest for the Diocese of Auckland. And in my time, I've served at Papakura, Devonport, Walkworth and Puhoy, and now at Parnell, and of course, the university chaplaincy. The end of my need for conversion and my journey, not at all. Again and again, in those years, and it's eight now since my ordination, I've had to come face to face with the fact that the path I'm walking isn't always the one the Lord is calling me to. That in fact, I need, yes, to convert, to change. When was the last time this happened? This morning. And it will probably happen again tomorrow and the next day, because that, if there's one thing I've learned in my rather mixed journey to this point, it is that conversion is truly a daily occurrence. Because in the end, our vision of who and what we are meant to be is so much less, so much inferior to the vision that God has for us. And for most of us, our life is one long journey of discovering that the Lord's vision is much bigger, much more wonderful, much more glorious than we can at this point in our lives appreciate. But hopefully each day of our lives is a discovery of a little more of that. But with that discovery comes each day the need to turn to look at this hopefully wider vision and say, yes, I want that. And then, well, what do I need to do next to walk that path? Hopefully, I'm going to keep doing that day after day for the rest of my life. Hopefully, so will each of you. Recognizing that at its heart, conversion is not a single moment in time. It is simply our relationship with God. It's why that message that Jesus sent the disciples out with always started with those words, repent, turn to the Lord, so that we may know more clearly each day 
the Lord's plan for us, and more important, to come to see its goodness, its wonder. Hopefully, I will continue to do that. I ask you to pray for me that I will. It's perhaps the most important prayer any of us should ask of our brothers and sisters. And it's equally the one that we should always be prepared to hear from our brothers and sisters and to, with a very good heart, say, of course, that together we may engage in that great work, that great wonder of conversion, so that all of us may, in the end, inherit the fullness of not our vision for ourselves, but God's vision. Thank you. Thank you, Father Chris, um, for your beautiful testimony. I think there's a lot uh, in that, especially those of us who are raised Catholic, that um, we can all relate to. So thanks again.